from Case at 12. The news at 530 starts right now. Good evening. Hundreds of people gathered at Milam Park this afternoon to remember two black men who were fatally shot by local police. This makes for the ninth consecutive day of protests here in San Antonio. Tiffany Huertas is live now downtown to give us the latest from today's demonstrations. Tiffany, what are you seeing out there? Courtney, Tim, it, it's all gone right now, but earlier, as you mentioned, hundreds of people were here. They came to honor Marquise Jones and Charles Roundtree. Everyone started gathering here around 2 p.m., and then they made their way down Commerce Street, and they ended up at Bear County Courthouse and then back at the park. The event was organized by the autonomous Brown Berets, the San Antonio. The vigil was organized to remember and honor Marquise Jones and Charles Roundtree, who were killed by SAPD officers. The families of the two men spoke to us today. Everyone's chanting everyone's name across the country, um, but no one has said anything about our loved ones. I think it's a good thing, you know, that they're actually starting to hear our voice and, you know, recognizing that what happened was wrong. Jones was shot by off-duty San Antonio police officer Robert Encina in 2014 after the car Jones was riding in rear-ended another car at the drive through of Chachos on Perimbido. Encina said he fired because Jones had a gun and a Bear County grand jury cleared Encina of any wrongdoing. Federal jurors also decided Encina didn't use excessive and unnecessary deadly force that would have violated Jones' civil rights. Now, 18-year-old Roundtree was shot during an assault call at a home in 2018. As we reported, SAPD officer Steve Casanova responded to the home for an assault call and at the scene, Devontae Snowden reached for a gun. Casanova opened fire, but Roundtree was in the line of fire and was shot and killed. A Bear County grand jury voted not to indict that police officer. Now tonight, we're going to be hearing more from the family and what they want to happen next. Tim Courtney. Thank you so much, Tiffany. We'll be sure to keep monitoring any more demonstrations that pop up tonight. White coats for black lives. Students from UT Health San Antonio and Incarnate Word are standing in solidarity with other protesters around the city. Their goal is to demand change for future medical students of color. Stephen Gavasso is live now at UT Health San Antonio Athletic Field. Stephen, what's the crowd like out there? Hey, it's been a long day. It's fine. Well, Courtney, that silent protest wrapped up just a few moments ago, but you can see we still have a few medical students out here. Now, we are told several hundred had actually shown up to support the cause. Now, the crowd took a moment of silence for 8 minutes and 47 seconds. The exact time a former Minneapolis police officer kept his knee on the neck of George Floyd. Now, we are told that the administration did not have any involvement and said students from both Incarnate Word and UT Health San Antonio joined together on Tuesday to coordinate the protest. Students say they they want to hold institutions accountable when it comes to eliminating racial bias in medicine practice. We're here to call for change. We need things to change. Like black and brown bodies need to be in this community, this medical community, in order for systemic change to happen. Now, the group here also honored the lives of Brianna Taylor, an emergency medical technician who was fatally shot by Louisville police, and Ahmed Arbery, who was fatally shot while jogging in a neighborhood in Georgia. Now, the group says the objective, of course, is to still push for change, which is why they have established a booth over here to get people to register to vote. Tim Courtney. Stephen Cavazos reporting live. Thank you. And just like the protesters haven't let up here in San Antonio, it's the same scene from around the rest of the country and even around the world. It's been nearly two weeks since George Floyd died in Minneapolis while being arrested by police. ABC's Megan Tervisian is in San Diego with the latest. Today, protesters gaining traction and growing across the country and the world. In London, thousands of people demonstrating outside the U.S. Embassy. In Bristol, England, protesters dragging the statue of a slave trader through the streets, throwing it into the river. And here at home in the city where George Floyd died, calls for drastic change. The city's mayor, Jacob Fry, booed after refusing a protester's demand to abolish the city's police department. And in Washington, one of the largest crowds yet in that city, a sea of protesters marching toward the White House. Who's street? Who's street? Who's 
Amen. Overnight, protesters adding the words defund the police to a mural that was originally commissioned by the Department of Public Works to read Black Lives Matter. This morning, D.C.'s mayor questioned about whether the city will remove it. Well, it's not a part of the mural and uh, we certainly encourage expression, um, but we are using the city streets for city art. Overnight, a Virginia police officer arrested and charged with assault after this violent takedown of a black man caught on police body camera. The white officer firing his stun gun at the man as he walked away. The officer then using the stun gun again while pinning the man to the ground. We can all agree that the footage of this incident is unsettling. I want our community to know that we are pursuing charges that are in line with current law. Tomorrow, former police officer Derek Chauvin, who held George Floyd to the ground with his knee, will make his first court appearance. Tomorrow in Houston, people will gather to say goodbye to George Floyd with the memorial service and then a private burial on Tuesday. Megan Tavrizian, ABC News, San Diego. Back here at home now, turning to other local stories, San Antonio police are looking for a suspect who shot a man three times while he was walking into his home last night. It happened near the intersection of South Enid Street and South Acme Road. Police say the victim got into an argument with the suspect who eventually shot him once in the shoulder and twice in the abdomen. He was transported to University Hospital in serious but stable condition. Assad seen at a house fire this morning on the north side. A man was hospitalized and two dogs died at a fire at the home on Finale Court and Silhouette Street. When fire crews got there, they saw flames inside the single story home. The homeowner was taken to University Hospital for smoke inhalation. Investigators there believe the fire was an accident, but damages are estimated at $50,000. Take a look now at the latest COVID-19 cases here in Bear County. There are a total of 3,290 confirmed cases. That is an increase of 147. The death toll remains at 78. Right now, 84 people are hospitalized with 34 in the ICU and 16 on ventilators. So far, more than 1,900 people have recovered from the virus. Looking ahead now, Governor Greg Abbott continues to roll out phase three of reopening the Texas economy. Beginning this Friday, June 12th, all restaurants can expand to their occupancy of 75 percent. Bars will remain at 50 percent as long as patrons are seated. And following week of June 19th, amusement parks and carnivals in counties with more than 1,000 cases can open at 50 percent capacity. Counties with fewer than 1,000 cases have already been allowed to open. Still ahead on the news at 530, one of the states with the strictest stay at home orders is expanding its reopening. Those details and why experts are warning of a surge in cases. Plus, tropical storm Cristobal just made landfall near southeast Louisiana. Katie will have the latest and we'll show you some of the damage video already coming in from the states that are being impacted. New York City, once the epicenter of the coronavirus U.S. outbreak, is set to begin its phase one reopening tomorrow. This after nearly three months of strict stay at home orders. However, cases continue to increase nationwide with 1.9 million confirmed cases and more than 100,000 deaths so far. As crowds continue to gather to protest, officials are concerned there could be another surge in cases. Several cities opening free testing sites for protesters. Outside with live cam, 92 degrees, another hot day today. Some fair weather clouds out there. There were a few sneaky little showers out there earlier this afternoon, but those have moved on out. Justin Horn texted me. He got a little bit of light rain in his yard. Maybe that was the case for you as well, but the rest of the evening will be rain free. Checking on the aquifer today. It is down another about half a foot or so, four tenths, uh, four tenths of a foot there. And we'll get you a look at your aquifer level and pollen count uh, coming up in the full forecast. We'll talk about crystal ball as well. That's up next. Tropical storm Cristobal created dangerous storms in Florida yesterday. The National Weather Service just confirmed a tornado touchdown in Orlando and it damaged several homes in the area. Meanwhile, check this out. Waves can be seen crashing over a roadway, leaving tons of debris behind in Dauphin Island, Alabama. The video from earlier this afternoon, vehicles had trouble traveling due to flooding and the heavy rainfall. High video video of high floods also seen in Mississippi. This is from Ocean Springs. Someone in the area shot the video showing a dock surrounded by rising floodwaters. 
And the area expected to face the biggest impact from the tropical storm is Louisiana. The storm has sustained winds of 50 miles per hour. Some areas along the Gulf could see four to six, even up to 10 inches of rain. And we're just at the start of this, uh, Katie, as far as the storm season goes here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, very early into the Atlantic hurricane season. This is our third named storm already of the season. Crystal ball making landfall just after 5 p.m. this afternoon in far southeastern Louisiana. Here's the latest stats on crystal ball. Now maximum sustained winds at 50 miles per hour, moving north at just seven miles per hour. This for the most part has been a slow moving storm. And as we zoom in here, landfall specifically. Now, when you get down in these southern parishes there next to the Gulf of Mexico, it can be very, uh, very hard to pinpoint exactly where these tropical systems make landfall simply because of the terrain there in far south Louisiana. Uh, but it looks like landfall was just to the east of Grand Isle there. Now the heavy rain continues for Louisiana and portions of the Gulf Coast. But look at this over the next three to four days. This system will weaken, but will still bring rain all the way up to the Great Lakes by Wednesday of this week. So. Crystal ball still has a little bit of life to it. Here's a look at current radar. Very heavy uh, bands of rainfall stretch from South Louisiana through Mississippi and into Alabama. And this, as you saw, has the, the impacts from this system have been far reaching all the way over to Florida. Tornadoes yesterday, more reports of tornadic activity in Florida today because of the outer bands of crystal ball. So still some heavy rain and flooding issues there for our neighbors in Louisiana. And it looks close, but it's oh so far away. We're sunny here and it's hot across Texas. 92 in San Antonio, 102 out in Del Rio right now and the humidity. It's still there as well, and that brings the heat index into play. So your air temperature is your uh, in white there. That's the white number. The yellow number is your heat index or what it feels like when you factor in the humidity. Look at these numbers down closer to the coast feeling like 107 in Beeville, but your air temperature is just 95 92 in San Antonio with a heat index of 97. So this evening things will be staying warm through seven o'clock will be in the 90s and then falling through the 80s clear skies, but It'll be staying pretty humid out there through the evening hours as we wrap up the weekend. Tomorrow, I expect to see a lot more sun, less cloud cover than we saw today, and that's going to make things even hotter for us here, putting your high temperature tomorrow at 100 degrees. The heat index maxing out in the heat of the afternoon around 105 here in San Antonio. But as you just saw, those heat index numbers certainly could be closer to 110 down on the coastal bend. Also, something to consider tomorrow, air quality will not be as good. It's going to be considered unhealthy for sensitive groups because of higher levels of ozone in the air tomorrow. Now, these sensitive groups, we've seen this a couple times already late in the spring. These sensitive groups are those with respiratory conditions such as asthma, also the very young and the elderly. So if you or a family member fall into one of those groups, you're encouraged to limit your time outside tomorrow, especially in the afternoon when it's going to be hottest. Now, crystal ball actually is playing a part in our heat tomorrow and in turn playing a part in those air quality issues that we'll see on Monday because on the western side of Cristobal, we've got a lot of sinking air here in South Texas. That's going to make things even hotter and that's also going to keep those ground level pollutants like ozone trapped closer to the ground. And that's why we'll see those air quality issues tomorrow. So triple digits tomorrow afternoon, triple digits again on Tuesday, not because of crystal ball, but because of an approaching frontal boundary that's going to compress the air out in front of this frontal boundary. And we'll see high temperatures back in the triple digits again Tuesday. Now, as far as this frontal boundary is concerned, what it will really do is drop our humidity as we get into the middle of next week. But it may also produce a stray shower or storm late Tuesday. And it's not out of the question that any stray storms that develop could be on the stronger side. So that's something to keep in mind. And we put that rain chance in here for you later on Tuesday. But look behind that frontal boundary, it'll still be hot, but not as humid Wednesday into Thursday. So we will get a little bit of a break here by the middle part of the upcoming week. Guys, that's what we call a break these days. So that's okay. We'll take it. <laughs> hot, hot, hot. Yes. All right. Some people might not like it, but Coach Pop has a voice and he's not afraid to weigh in on current events. And he recently did so very powerfully, Larry. Yes, Spurs voices a video series that the San Antonio Spurs have put out. A lot of players, a lot of people behind the scenes, but the most popular video so far from head coach Greg Popovich speaking out with some very stirring words about racism and the death of George Floyd. Plus, what happens if an NBA player tests positive for COVID-19 during the playoffs? Coming up.
The Spurs started a video series called Spurs Voices, allowing members of the organization and not just the players to talk about how racism has impacted them. Yesterday and today, the Spurs posted several of these videos on Twitter, including one with head coach Greg Popovich addressing racism and the murder of George Floyd. It has more than one million views. Pop became emotional when talking about Floyd and delivered some stirring words during his nearly three and a half minute video. It's important that we as white people, because I think nothing's going to happen. We have to do it. Black people have been shouldering this burden for 400 years. The only reason this nation has made the progress it has is because of the persistence and patience and effort of black people. Uh, you know, the, the, the history of our nation from the very beginning in many ways was a lie. It's easy for people to let things go because it doesn't involve them. It's like the neighborhood where you know there's a dangerous corner and you know that something's gonna happen someday and nobody does anything. And then a young kid gets killed and a stop sign goes up. Well, without getting too political, we got a lot of stop signs that need to go up quickly because our country is in trouble. And the basic reason is race. On Monday morning, the Spurs called an internal town hall on a video conference that swelled to more than 300 staffers, including Popovich and R.C. Buford. The emotional meeting lasted nearly three hours and gave various staffers, ranging from security guards to staff in the ticket office, the opportunity to share their personal stories involving experiences with racism. The NBA and the NBA Players Association have a lot of challenges ahead as they get ready to resume the season July 31st in Orlando at the Walt Disney Resort. One key topic is what happens if a player tests positive positive for COVID-19 once he's inside the Orlando bubble environment. Front office and union officials are expecting players who test positive to be quarantined for a minimum of seven days and possibly 10 to 14 based on several factors, sources told ESPN. During his appearance on Inside the NBA, Commissioner Adam Silver was asked if a player tests positive during the playoffs, will the team be shut down and sacrifice the series? The answer is we don't believe we would need to. You know, we've been dealing with a, a group of our experts plus public health authorities down in Florida now. And the view is that if we were, if we were testing every day and we're able to trace, in essence, the, the contacts that player has had, we're able to, in essence, contain that player, you know, and, and separate him from his team. And we're continuing to test every day. Um, the, the belief is we would not have to shut down if a single player tested positive. NBA teams will be contained to three specific hotels within the Disney complex, sources told ESPN. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Texan safety Michael Thomas was introduced to the Houston media this week. The seven-year pro signed a one-year deal with the Texans back in April. <clears throat> He's from Houston and went to Nimitz High School. He's played for the 49ers, Dolphins, Giants, and now his Houston Texans. He says his conversations with former and current teammates in regards to the death of George Floyd have been genuine and touching. To see the players behind the scenes, like Kenny Stills, myself, you know, we can't be face to face all the time. It's like, look, bro, like there's a march today. These people are speaking. Do you want to help speak? Do you want to, you know, just be a part of it, be a part of the the, the, the the hurt and the healing process and just being with the people? You know, like that's that's been what it's like behind the scenes. Everybody reaching out to each other, showing love, showing support and just saying, what can we do to like help lean in on it? Thomas says he wants to improve the lives of the African-American community and has developed friendships with members of Congress to help his quest. NASCAR great Jimmy Johnson says he wants to be more vocal when it comes to social injustice. The seven-time Cup Series champion says that starts with him listening more and educating himself. You know, when, when you sit down and, and listen, you realize a lot of the injustices that take place across the broad spectrum. And um, as a, a figure of our sport and somebody that just is a citizen that cares in this country, I feel like, uh, you know, for me personally, it's really time to listen. And I look forward to the journey that takes me on and then the ways that I can be active. Bubba Wallace, the only full-time African-American NASCAR driver across the three series, is wearing a T-shirt with the message, I can't breathe and Black Lives Matter prior to today's Cup Series race in Atlanta. Over the radio, he told his crew it's been a stressful week and he's racing with a lot on his heart and on his mind. Tonight on Instant Replay, Wagner quarterback Isaiah Williams built a practice net from the ground up so he could practice while things were shut down. With help from his grandpa, the final prize 
product turned out great. Plus, UTSA football joined us this week to talk racial injustice. It's a moving conversation. And in Carner Word, golfer John Hill fought through personal loss to make a pro tour. That and much more, guys, tonight on Instant Replay. Another jam-packed all-new IR. <laughs> you got it. Thanks, Larry. We'll be right back. Stay all right, sending you off with Silly Socks Sunday. <laughs> sriracha and flamingos, that's so hard. Okay, uh, I think the sriracha is Tim. Nope. Nope. <laughs> sriracha socks. socks. Sriracha <laughs> Special <laughs> thanks to my friend Shelly and her mom, Terry, for sending me the flamingos. Aw, those are so cute. I think it's a tie today. <laughs> tie it is. See you at 10.